everyone and happy Saturday. So um, I realized this weekend that there's about three or four videos I want to record. Oh, well, hi. Goodness, we aren't, oh, sorry, that was her hitting it. Um, we're only 20 seconds in and already cat's here. Boy, I think that's a record. This is Winry, by the way. I suppose she's being the coloring assistant today. Okay, she had enough. Alright. I don't know if I've... I took a video of her in Sedona. I don't know if I posted that one yet. So, anyway. I realized there were a number of videos I really wanted to record this weekend. Um, color pages for June. The finale of the Heather Valentin color along that I had. Um my works in progress coloring in this for uh, the Dover nature I think it is contest um, and I also want to talk about books in a video and I also want to put together pictures and video for my, my trip last weekend to too many games so I realized that was a number of videos so what I am going to do for this one and I apologize ahead of time for the length we're going to run through finished pages for the month. We're also going to talk about works in progress. We're going to talk about carefree coloring finish ups. We're going to talk about Heather Valentin color along uh, the finished picture. And then finally, once I get through all these, I'm going to color in this for a little bit and talk about it. I think there's a plane going overhead and I've got a window open so if the microphone picks that up I'm sorry hopefully this looks a little better than my other video um yeah that that's been a huge huge frustration but I'll get to that as I'm coloring <laughs> I do not remember if I showed this picture for the end of May um I look back at sorry I hit the microphone and I dropped some. Um, I finished this towards the end of May, and when I looked at the video for finished pages for May, I did not see this one. Um, this is from Romantic Country, The Second Tale, and it was a one pencil coloring challenge um, from sim in the Simple Art for Adults group, and I randomly picked a uh, a pencil from Prismacolors, uh, surprisingly enough, lucky, luckily enough, from my color pencil sets, and I chose, I think this is, imp no, not Imperial Violet. I'll come up with it, put it in the description. Anyway, I was really happy with this, and I loved how it turned out. I really want to try to do this again in the future, because this was a great uh, lesson in values and and doing going from light to dark and gradients and things like that so again not sure if i had showed it but there it is now i have taken the autofocus off since it kept trying to focus a lot in the last video so if things get blurry i will look and try my best to fix it as quick as i can so that was the end of may doesn't really count for June, but I want to make sure I talked about it. One work in progress I did talk about was this picture in Lost Ocean by Joanna Basford. Now, if you've seen my Arteza colored pencils review or my uh, pictures from like February to May, you probably saw this in progress, um, but I did finish it in June right at the beginning. This was a test for the Arteza um, color pencils, the 72 set. That's all I used for the fish itself, and then this was a uh, pan pastel, and I'm not real happy with that. But the Arteza pencils did beautifully. I absolutely love their color, and I want to use them as often as possible now, so um, I wouldn't say they replaced my Prismacolors, but in terms of vibrancy, they come pretty darn close. The only thing is they just don't blend as well. That's about the only issue I have with them. 
All right, I have an actual mess going on down here. You know, we're going to talk about this one in a minute. <laughs> so, um, if you've seen a couple of my videos, I have a series going on now called Carefree Coloring. And um, I've had two sessions so far. This was from the first session. And I think I showed this finished picture in the Jade Review. Uh, Jade Summer Review by Coloring Books. Um, but I don't, if you didn't watch that this was the finished product and I use Crayola twistable colored pencils in a few places and then the rest are just Sharpies and Bic marking. I had no shading or anything I just wanted to color to color and I had a blast doing this one. I absolutely love this book. I'm telling you this will be the first book I do. I entirely complete. I may even go through the duplicates and do them in different ways. They're just absolutely adorable. This is probably my favorite book, or pretty close to it. Which is funny, because it's not cats. Alright, so for uh, my second session for creative coloring, carefree coloring, creative coloring, oh boy. Um, two cups of coffee didn't do me one bit of good, evidently. Um, I did color from Creative Haven's uh, Flower Mandalas. I am normally not a big mandala fan, but I do really like these, and I thought it would be perfect for the coloring session. Sorry, I'm trying to get that up, get it pulled up. And here is the finished product. I'll zoom in a little since that way you can see a little more of the detail. So basically, um, all I used were Jelly Roll gel pens for this one. And I hadn't really had a chance to use them before. I got the 74 set. Um, and I also did some stippling here to keep from having to make them all like solid color blocks. And I really like how it turned out. And again, didn't have a palette, just picked up pens and said these are nice. And I started coloring with them. So this is the finished one from that. And that was Wednesday. I think, or Thursday. Goodness, I can't even keep up. Now, <laughs> I went back and finished this one after that one. This was actually going to be the carefree coloring picture. <laughs> and uh, I had tried to record when I started this one, and I had issues. Yes, I know, big surprise. And so I had to start over, so I started on the other one. But I did really want to go back and finish this one. And honestly, I think I like this one a little better than the other one. Um, sorry, I keep zooming in and out. But uh, I don't know if you can see it that well. But I did some more stippling in a lot of little places here. Um, just consistency with it. It turned out beautiful. Um, this is actually a yellow gel pen stippling and when you look at it it actually kind of looks like it's a pale yellow so I was really pleased with how it turned out this was also done entirely in jelly roll gel pens all right there we go I'll keep it zoomed in for now if I need to zoom it back out I will but all right so we're going to come to this one I, if you go back to my videos, I have a color along for uh, Heather Valentin that I participated in. Anne over at A Colorful Life uh, was featuring Heather for the, uh, her artist for the color along for June. I did not have any of her books, and this is one of, one of the two books that I received, um, or that I ordered from Amazon. I thought I would try to do something a little different with it and these pictures are adorable I absolutely love them yeah no this isn't gonna work dang it <laughs> I, I apologize if you have motion sickness issues this is probably not uh, the best video so this was the first picture I did in the book and this was kind of a test I used Crayola super tips and I actually uh, did a watercolor wash with them on the base of the leaves, the pot, and the flowers. 
and I also treated the pot with a uh, clear gesso and I absolutely loved how this turned out this was one of those pictures and I know we've all had them where you look at it and you're like eh, you know I'm not a not this isn't really you know my favorite picture but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna color it and then you get about halfway through it and you actually are really enjoying it and thinking oh wow yes this is a great picture and you put in an effort to finish it and that's exactly what happened here um, the colored pencils over the watercolor washes were all uh, Pelican brand colored pencils which are uh, budget friendly pencils so so that was kind of my test and so hang on. nope that didn't do any good Ooh, that made it okay there we go this was kind of my test for the actual uh, color along I wanted to do in the video sessions and I had two of the sessions and I never had a third one to show the finished product so this page this page might be the most frustrating coloring page I have completed since I started uh, doing this I did the exact I had the exact same approach hang on just a moment Yeah, it's a little better I have a daylight type lamp and it actually works really well for the lighting for this but this it was kind of washing this out so um, oh goodness man <laughs> high production value that is what I am all about here okay oh, I was just like there anyway I had the same approach for this one. I did a watercolor wash on the egg, the basket, the leaves, and these hibiscus flowers. And I wanted to color the flowers similar to a type of hibiscus called the Illuminati hibiscus. And uh, I probably need to look that up. I, I meant to explain it, but go Google it. It's really interesting. I've never found out though why they named these the Illuminati hibiscus but anyway I thought that was hilarious I, well not hilarious but I thought it was funny so that was my plan for these and I did use gesso on them I was hoping that the texture of it actually would help with these flowers and uh, I also did that with the basket and the egg and everything was going pretty good even the dragon but these flowers man oh man <laughs> so part of the issue was my phone started fighting with me um, it did it ate a few hour-long sessions with this that I had to kind of skip over and explain what I had done because obviously I couldn't go back and redo it then it kept dying from low battery it was recording things uh, in the wrong orientation and I should never record a video late night. I probably would be sillier, but I I don't know. It hits about 8, 8.30, and I know if I start a video, I'm going to get pretty frustrated unless it's like a carefree coloring one. So the last night I was trying to record here, I pretty much got mad and threw pencil at the wall because <laughs> um, it just wasn't turning out, and the like the paper was ripping right here and I was having some bleeding from the watercolors and uh, the Crayola markers and oh my goodness I was so frustrated I took my pencils with me in the hopes of finishing this in Philadelphia I did not but somehow I managed to lose my yellow pelican pencil so I probably need to order a whole new set so when I got home I looked at this and I said all right I want to finish it I want to at least look at it and say you know I pushed through it I finished it it may not be my favorite picture but I wanted to actually see it through so if anything I'm proud of finishing it um, and like I said these flowers are not at all how I anticipated them to turn out everything else I was pretty pleased with the leaves and the basket in particular I absolutely love that and that will probably be my approach for anything like that in the future 
I almost want to go back to like a Joanna Basford book or something with all the leaves and do stuff like this. So, yeah, this is probably my least favorite picture. And it was certainly the most frustrating, but I did finish it. And I managed to get two Heather Valentin uh, pages colored this month. So I was really happy about that. And thanks to Anne, I actually, or, uh, from A Colorful Life, I actually ordered Lunar Mysteries, too, from Heather Valentin because she was, Anne was coloring out of it, and it looked like an awesome book. So I looked it up on Amazon, and I thought, you know, I really want this one. So you'll probably see more of those in the future. Real quick, since I'm just babbling, I'm going to show a couple works in progress I have. I forgot to get the Enchanted Forest one. I'll have to go get that in a minute. Now, I started this one when I did the Arteza Pencils review because I also wanted to show an example of mixing the Arteza Pencils with others, like Prismacolor and Faber-Castell were the other pencils I used for these blends. And I, I'm telling you, the Arteza Pencils, like, you see the vibrancy of it. That's thanks to all three types of pencils. And the Arteza pencils blend beautifully with other brands' pencils. That is really where I think the Arteza pencils shine. They give you additional color choices. I mean, it's only 72, so it's difficult to color and blend with just the Arteza pencils. But when you use them together with these, oh, you, you can get some really beautiful results. I just could not get back to this no matter how hard I tried. So, I will look to hopefully finish this in June. And I don't know why everything went dark all of a sudden, but I can fix that. Kind of. There we go. That's better. All right. Oh, maybe it was just my computer went dark. <laughs> all right. So, going to work on that one. And this one. I had started this picture. This was not a book I had planned to color in any time soon. Um... This was kind of bought as a tang uh, like a joke a joke birthday gift, um, and uh, while I love the Jade Summer books, I wasn't anticipating coloring in this one anytime soon. I had picked this page to show how watercolor pencils do on Create Space paper, and I used the Hero watercolor pencils. Well, once I started shading with them. I thought, oh my goodness, these are gorgeous, and I hadn't even, I haven't even used the watercolor, uh, the wet water brush on some of these. It's really just up in here, and I'll be honest with you, almost like just the plain pencil look more, so I think I'm actually going to work on this one and finish it, and this was gel pens, so yeah, there's something for you. The Hero watercolor pencil blend beautifully and almost are great just on their own. And then, finally, I will show this work in progress. And this is the one I am working on currently and hopefully can finish today. Probably not, but I'm going to try really hard. I uh, This is a Creative Haven book called Country Charm. And it's by Dover Publishing. Dover is having a uh, contest on their website if you go and Google Dover Publishing. Um, where they want submissions of, you know, nature and landscapes and things like that. And, um, of course, it was June 30th was the last day, and it is indeed June 30th, and I, I am nowhere near finished with this. So I thought I would actually work on this one today while we, while we chat a bit, um, or I chat a bit, I guess, since this is on a live stream. And I'll work on this a little bit um, as kind of a color and chat for the rest of this video. So, if you just wanted to see what my works in progress and my completed pictures were, you may want to go to, uh, you may want to go ahead and stop and move on. And, you know, you can always come back to this later while you're uh, coloring or whatever and you have something, want something in the background. So, I'm going to zoom in on this before I get started because it's really kind of hard to see what I'm doing on here otherwise. So um, I started out, and this was the one I worked on um, 
while I was on vacation. I had started doing some different greens for the ferns and the leaves down here. And then I moved on to the hills up here and the trees. Um, so far, I have used Arteza, Faber-Castell, uh, colored pencils. I'm sure there's going to be a Prismacolor in there somewhere. Um, I believe these are done with fine liners. This morning, I actually got the water in the sky done using Copic markers. And I love how the water turned out. It, I, I am so pleased with it. The sky, uh, not so much. It's darker than I would have liked, but I just didn't have light enough Copic markers to really, to really get the effect I was hoping for. And I also have some cleanup I've got to work on up there, but I will get to that later. And it still looks, it still looks really good. So I don't know what I'm doing with the grass yet, but my plan for the houses and possibly the path will be. I'm going to use Tombow water brush markers um, as watercolors as a base just to give it a light wash in the background. And then I'm going to try to use Distress Ink and kind of tap over it to get that grainy kind of pattern that you would see with the stone. And then I may come back in with colored pencil to darken some of the stones and, and things like that. And, so we'll probably work on that part now, the houses, and I assume this was a barn, but it's really, I think, a house. So we'll just see how this goes, and I, that may be all we get to today, but I will have to endeavor to finish this one way or another today. So um, you'll be able to see this finished picture later on. All right, let's see. Um, I want to start first. Let's go ahead and start with this one back here because I'm going to have to let these dry so I may have to go ahead and do this and then move on to something else to give them enough time to dry so I this is not I'm just trying this this is an 847 or the uh, 847 Tombow marker it's kind of like a rusty red color unfortunately they don't have color names just numbers so all right, so like with any other type, whoop, and don't look at the camera, look at the palette. With any other type of watercolor uh, wash I plan to use, I put it in a plastic palette. If you haven't already seen this, I've done this a few times by now. So hopefully you kind of know where this is going. So I put that in there and then I'm using the Derwent number two water brush today to uh, do the washes. So you kind of prime the brush let me grab a paper towel real quick to make sure there's no other color on it for the moment. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of do a very light wash here. And I'm not, I'm going to try to be careful and not let it bleed through too much. But if it does, I think, um, I tried this with the Heather Valentin picture. It's the... Tombow Mono Sand Eraser. And this surprisingly got up smudges. It, it erased where some watercolor had bled, um, some markers. So I think I might be able to get away with it. it I am not a color in the lines type of person, as you probably already guessed. So <laughs> if it does bleed a little bit, I think I'll be fine. So we'll go ahead and start on this one since this is kind of in the background. Actually, let me do one thing. See, this is like a gotta get serious picture here. So I'm trying to find, here we go. I'm just using a random thing just to make sure it wasn't gonna be a super strong color. It was really all I was looking for. So yeah, this is not a super serious picture, but one where maybe, <laughs> sorry. I'm going to have to really watch my camera at this angle because um, I just hit it with my, hit the stand thing with my head. So, all right. So, I'm going to just do a wash here on this house. And I'll probably go very lightly. I am not a speedy colorist. Actually, what I may do, um, depending on how far we get in this one, I may go ahead and record finishing it. 
and then I can speed it up and just you know you can actually see the process that happens for the finished product if I do manage to get this finished today we're gonna cross our fingers and hope fortunately this weekend is kind of laid back since I was gone so much last weekend um, and so I'm pretty excited to actually be able to work on some stuff that I that I had planned. I enjoyed the trip, but it's also nice just to have a quiet weekend every now and then. I will say this, short of marker paper or watercolor paper for these, the Creative Haven books, hands down to me, are some have some of the best paper for mixed media. It, it this paper takes pretty much anything I throw at it. Uh, these watercolors, um, pens, markers, colored pencil. I could probably even use, I'm sure I could use acrylic paint if I can use watercolor. Um, I didn't even have to pre-treat it. It doesn't pill, it doesn't. I went over this multiple times in the sky with the Copic markers and it never pilled, it never looked like it was gonna tear. It, it, is, it, it stands up to a lot of abuse from different, different media types. And it has got to be probably some of my favorite coloring book paper that I've come across just because it's super tough. So It does soak in marker and watercolor a little bit. Actually, the watercolor doesn't seem to be doing it as much, but it did soak up the Copic pretty well. Um, but I was still able to work with it fast enough to get it to blend mostly. Again, it's not marker paper, you know, so you're probably still going to have issues with it drying too quickly. But I tried to work. Oh my goodness. Sorry, I'm trying to look at it without like hitting the camera again. If you're watching this, uh, thank you, is all I got to say. Hopefully, I think what the setup I have today will be what I go with um, from here on out. So I won't really, uh, you know, I might fix that later. So I'm not really, uh, this, like I said, this will probably be the setup I have from here on out unless I have any issues with this, so. Unfortunately, I may have to look for a different way to position the camera here because um, it is, <laughs> I, I, I can easily hit it with my head as we've, as we've seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the brick on this chimney too. So, during my last carefree coloring, I kind of filled everybody in on the trip and how everything went. And if you haven't seen that, just to summarize, I had a great time. Once I actually got on the plane to fly there, <laughs> that was an experience. And if you, I might put the, I might put the timestamp in the description if you just want to hear that story. But overall, it was a great time. My brother and I got to kind of hang out and and it's hard for us to do that a lot here lately because he, why did it do that? Oh, <laughs> so I was like, why is it, why is the picture going dark again? But no, it was just my computer. I hadn't touched the mouse in a few minutes and it was, it was going to try to uh, go to sleep on me. Yeah, people, I, uh, and I'm pretty big on technology, so, usually, but here lately, I kind of feel like an old fogey about it. Everything's gotten, uh, away from me, so I guess I'm going to be the, uh, family member that has to call for tech support, I'm sure, like, when we have chips in our brains about 20 years from now and mine tries keeps getting a blue screen of death because of course it'll be windows and uh, I'll have to get my brother to come and fix it <laughs> like well I can't I can't <laughs> I 
I can't add two and two, so you're going to have to come here and figure out what's going on. But, um, now, I mean, I'm trying to keep this, talking about the picture, I'm trying to keep it as even as I can, but a little bit of variation is not too bad. Again, depending on how much I go over it with the distressed ink and the colored pencils, it, it's probably not going to make that much of a difference. Actually, this kind of works out because it's kind of more of a highlight in this area anyway because it's facing the sun. Hopefully, you can see this pretty well. But, um, yeah, my brother works full-time for um, a company that does server and laptop setups for a number of uh, like Fortune 500 uh, companies. They'll send in an order and they put together, they have a certain setup they want for the servers and laptops and my brother's part of the group that works on that. And I think the weekend before we left, he worked about 80 hours that week. So, um, and he loves it. He is great at it. We both um, really are big on technology, but he is certainly ahead of me in that game right now because I told him, I said, I was okay and willing, I, I was okay with, you know, new stuff and kept up with it till about the time I turned 30. And then it just got so complicated. I was like, you know, no. I'll just stick with what I have, and if I need to upgrade, I'll figure it out then. And so far, that's actually been pretty successful for me, but um, I didn't even get a phone I could text with other than one of those flip phones until like two or three years after everybody else had it. <laughs> I just didn't really need it, and I... But my brother, oh man, oh man, he is on the ball when it comes to new stuff and he sees a lot of unique things um in the server setups and stuff so um i told him i said you know because i went to i went to get my bachelor's degree in computer information systems um and he is working on his associates um with a uh, online and uh, which he may go for his bachelor's after that. But I'm telling you, if he keeps doing how he's doing, I, and I, this is absolute truth, I told him he's going to wind up making more money than me and my husband combined before he turns 30. I mean, he's already making probably way more now than I made at 25. So I'm just happy he loves, he really enjoys his job. I mean, that's something I kind of, he, he didn't really know what he wanted to do. He knew had to, he, he knew it was going to be something with either game development or some kind of computer work. That turned out really pretty. All right, we're going to let that dry. We're going to change gears down to here. And this is really easy. Um, clean up, you just use a paper towel. And if it dried a little bit, yeah, just throw some water on it. Well, maybe you want to use actual water. I'm just being kind of lazy here. So yeah, anything acrylic or plastic or even metal. I have a metal watercolor tin that I use. is really good for this kind of stuff. So, hey. I realized that the picture wasn't going dark on that one. I'm learning. But we'll change gears to this one. So that house is a little bit red. I really want to do some bright colors for these flowers. So I decided, other than touching the wet part of the picture, that this is going to be more of a gray kind of stone and we'll probably still do the dark gray uh, black kind of roof there. So again, we're going to go with the Tombow brush markers. This is number N60. Actually, I didn't show you all that darker gray. Let me, let me go get that. So the stone will be N60. And the darker wash for the roof is, whoo, goodness. Okay. Yeah, you can't really see that. N35. So, all right. But anyway, um... 
like I said, he really enjoys his job, and he's very good at it, and, uh, yeah. I don't know where I was going with that, because I got sidetracked, but, anyway. So, yeah, the trip was great. Like I said, for details, you probably should watch the Carefree Coloring Number 2 video. Um, I, pr I will probably think of some pretty good stories to tell um, as we go along, but uh, I, I had to tell my husband everything from the get-go, because the way my memory's been lately, I can't remember anything, so when the inspiration strikes, I'll, I'll let y'all know. So, my return this week has been pretty busy, kind of frustrating. I've had to run some errands uh, that had to be put off because of the trip. Um, I had to catch up with work. I unfortunately do not have a backup at my job. Um, I think I mentioned that before. I am a contractor and I do uh, email marketing business to business. And uh, I've worked with this company as a contractor for about, oh, well, that was a poor flower, for about, I think it's a little over five years now. And um, unfortunately, as a contractor, at least for the company I work for, I do not get vacation time. Um, and I don't really have a backup at the company. So I have to work extra almost to be able to take off for a few days and be able to get stuff done ahead of time. But when I get back, like Monday, I still have a uh, work catch up. So Monday and Tuesday were exactly that. I was scrambling to try to get everything caught up. I had to, uh, I had to run stuff. Yeah. I had to run to uh, a different town for something. And uh, I can't remember what it was. Hmm. I wonder if this marker's. No, it's just being stubborn. Um. I was worried the marker was running dry for a minute there, but it's just such a light gray, it's not showing up in the palette much. But, yeah, Monday and Tuesday were pretty busy. I work remotely, so, um, which is a huge advantage and really, like, one of the biggest perks of the job that I work because if I have doctor's appointments, which definitely happen frequently now and um or anything like that then I do have a little more flexibility than I did in an office environment to actually be able to go to those appointments so um yeah I like I said I absolutely love that and to me that is almost priceless to be able to work um without like a bunch of office chatter and to be able to focus and you know I don't really miss an office environment because the way things are now even if you're in an office and some of you may have it a little differently if it's a smaller company um hmm focus has been picking up my my voice my microphone was turned around um any of you that work in a smaller office environment, you may be the exception to this, but if you work in a big office environment, a lot of times you don't even end up seeing people unless it's a meeting or something because everybody communicates through email or, or the message service that your company uses. Um, so, I mean, it, honestly, it's not really that different, and in some ways it's less distracting because if somebody stops by my cubicle or office or whatever, um, usually I get distracted by whatever I'm working on. So, um, totally appeals to my somewhat antisocial nature, I suppose. But, um, yeah, so, let's see, which day was it? Yeah, that was Monday. Tuesday, um... I have a friend that uh, I went to high school with, and I would say she's probably one of my best friends. Um, we've, we're, <laughs> I'm the kind of friend that, and, and I work, and I guess I'm friends with a lot of people who, um, it's kind of, you know, you have your ups and downs in terms of seeing each other, life gets in the way. 
uh, you get busy, but you can always pick up right where you left off. And that's the way me, me and uh, her are. So, I hadn't seen her in months. And uh, we chat a little bit here and there, but she lives um, pretty far out from the town I'm in. So, uh, it wasn't, I saw her occasionally, but, you know, even in this small a town, I didn't see her as often as I should, as you'd think. Plus, she's in another county now, so um, she does a lot of her errands there. But um, anyway, we hadn't seen each other in a while. And before I went on that trip, I got to talk to her on Messenger, and I was telling her about coloring and art and everything that was going on. Um, and uh, she, I had seen where she had posted a few pictures she had colored. So I told her, I said, well, we need to have a... Uh, we need to get together and color some. And she and she's super busy. I I am busy, but I like to try to um, ignore it and procrastinate. But um, we couldn't really get together till this past Tuesday. And um, so yeah, we sat at her kitchen table with her. Uh, hang on, just a moment. I'll be right back. 